Welcome to Black River. Before we get riding, it's important to know the basics. Remember, all barns do things a little differently. We'll show you the gist of ours so that you feel safe and confident before you ride. Hi, Miss Mira. Oh, hi, girls. By the way, I'm Miss Mira. Ready? Let's start with the tour. The first thing you'll see as you approach the barn is the show ring. This is where we have horse shows at the end of each session. And don't, don't forget free riding! Once you reach the barn gate, you must have boots to enter. Make sure they are riding boots and not fashion or rain boots. This is the vaulting ring, where we practice vaulting, the sport of gymnastics on horseback. Whenever you're on the vaulting horse or on the barrels, you must always wear tennis shoes! Bring them with you, but still wear your boots to the barn. You can change in the ring. This is the med room, where we keep horse medicine and other supplies. Only staff are allowed in here, so walk around and I'll meet you on the other side. Counselors get the food ready for the horses. You can also find lead ropes and halters. Leading in and feeding is how we start our mornings every day. When leading in the horses in the morning, everyone will line up against this fence. Counselors will have lead ropes, so there's no need for you to grab one. Make sure when you're next in line, you're paying attention and getting ready to grab the next horse. When the horse is coming out of the chute, a counselor will tell you its stall number and its name. Billy, number one. Thank you. Take the lead rope from his neck and take him to that stall. When leading in the horse, you should stand on the left side. Hold under his chin about six inches. Make, this will give you enough control so you don't have to stand too close to him. Hold the excess of the rope in your left hand and don't wrap it around any other body parts. When you want to start walking, look confidently ahead and walk right next to his head. Some clicking noises might be helpful if he doesn't want to move. Be sure when you're leading in your horse, you're not letting him go too far ahead and you're also not dragging. When you want to turn, walk confidently in the direction you want to go while lightly tugging on your horse. We don't want to yank our horses. When you want to stop, stop and give another nice light tug on his halter. Most of our horses would be happy to follow your lead. Once you reach your horse's stall, you're going to turn him around so he faces the front. To clip him in, you will unclip the clips on the side of the stall and clip them right onto the sides of his face. Then unclip the lead line and you're all set. Some of our older horses always need access to water. If your horse has a water bucket in his stall, you only need to clip him on one side, right under the chin, so he can access the water whenever he needs. After we lead in the morning, we'll all meet in the barn and you'll be given a feed bucket with the horse's name and stall number on it. You'll go to the correct stall and dump the contents into the feed bucket. It is very important that you dump the correct feed bucket into the correct horse's stall because some horses get special medicines. Once you've done that, you come to the far side of their face and unhook this and hook it right back onto the loop where it came from. Once all the horses have been fed, it is time to start tacking up. Once your counselor tells you what horse you're riding, he'll come to the horse board and find his name. He will have a number, which matches his stall and all of his tack. You are riding Evan. Where is he? Great! The bridles are found in the first tack room here. You'll go to the hook with your horse's stall number on it and take the bridle. You can put it on your right shoulder so your hands are really free. Then you can come to the bucket over here and grab a fly mask from the same room. Then you're going to get brushes. There's three different kinds. The first kind is a hard brush. Miss Mira, that's a soft brush because it's soft. And this one's a hard brush because it's hard. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Next you'll need a curry comb. Looks like this. Then you're going to come around to this side of the box. There'll be two different buckets where you're going to grab a hoof pick. We have two different saddle rooms. The higher numbers are in this room and the lower numbers are in this room. Grab the saddle with your horse's number with any blankets or pads on top of it and hold it on your hip like this. When you go to tack up your horse, he'll probably be unclipped on one side from eating. If he's finished eating, you can gently pull him to the middle and clip him back up. Now he's ready to be brushed. 
you're going to start with a curry comb. To use it, you're going to move it in a circular motion against his hair. You can do this on all the meaty parts of his body, like his back, belly, and shoulder. This loosens up any dirt and hair. That feels good for Evan. To remove all the dirt we just loosened up with the curry comb, we're going to use the hard brush. To use it, you're going to flick it in the direction that the fur goes. Do it in all of the areas that you just curry combed. Before riding, it is also important that you pick your horse's hooves. To pick his hooves, you're going to give him a nice pat on the shoulder to let him know that you're there. Then, you're going to run your hand down his leg, lean up against him, and pick up his hoof with your other hand. Firmly grip the top of his hoof so that you can support it once he lifts it. Once you have a good hold on it, use the pick to remove any dirt and pebbles. Make sure you flick it away from your face. Be gentle on the triangle area, in the middle of his hoof. This is called the frog, and it's very sensitive. Now you're ready to tack up your horse. You will always stand on the left side when tacking him up. When you get your saddle, some of them will have two blankets, a pad, or a blanket and a pad. This saddle has a blanket and a pad. You will always start with the blanket. It'll be folded a couple of times, but this first fold right here will go right up by his withers, this part. Then you will lay it down on this half, and gently fold it over to the other side. Make sure that this fold cuts right down the middle of his shoulder. Once it's on, you're going to slide it back just a little bit so that his hairs are going in the right direction and he's comfortable. You can ask a friend if your blanket's even. Hey, Miss Gracie, is my blanket even? Uh, a little more to the right. Perfect, thanks. Next you have the pad. The pad's gonna go right on top of the blanket. You should also make sure that it's even as well. Once it's on, you're going to grab the blanket and the pad and create a little air pocket so that air can reach under his saddle and he won't get too sweaty. And now the saddle. First, you're gonna take anything that's dangling and put it right on top of the seat. Then, you're going to lightly place it on top of his back. Next, you're gonna walk around to the other side. Make sure you go under the chains, in front of your horse, and not under his neck or behind his butt. Then you're going to come over here, put your stirrups down, come to the girth, and unbuckle it, just like a belt. You're going to make sure it is not twisted and walk back to the other side. Grab it from under his stomach, and now you're ready for the western knot. To tie the knot, bring the latigo through the ring on the girth so it comes up toward you. Then, loop it through the top so it goes down in the back here. Now, you will make a number four with the latigo and go back up and under, making sure nothing is twisted. Then pull the rest through the loop you made with the four. And that's how you tie the saddle knot. To tighten, just pull on the top la layer and tighten the loop until it is snug against your horse. Our staff will always safety check your tack before you get on the horse as well. Now you're ready to bridle your horse. You'll come up to the halter here, unbuckle it, and move it to his neck. Then you're going to take the reins and put them over his head. Now you're ready to give him the bit. This is a snaffle bit, and you want it to bend so that the pointy part faces the, away from him so it doesn't poke him in the mouth. Then you're going to reach around his head, grab the bridle, and gently ease the bit into his mouth. If he's not listening, you can stick your finger in the back like this and tickle his gums where there's no teeth. Once it's in, you'll put it over his ears and adjust the brow band. Some bridles have a throat latch. If they do, buckle them right here, just like a belt. Lastly, you're gonna grab your fly mask. This just slides right over their head. And generally, Velcro's right under their chin. helps to keep bugs out of the horse's eyes, and for some horses, helps them from getting sunburned. 
Now that you're all tacked up, you're going to wait for your instructor to call for your group. Miss Julia Sue. Now you're going to unclip the halter on the opposite side of the feeding bucket and remove the halter on the other side and place it in the feeding bucket connected to the chain. Now you're going to lead out your horse similar to how you do in the morning, about six inches underneath the chin and the rest in your left hand. Now you're ready to get riding.